this has been. Sure glad it's quitting time. What's matter, Joe? Job getting you down? Oh, Bill, the job's okay as jobs go. It's the customers I have to put up with that, well, uh, some of them give me a pain in the neck. Why don't you do like me? I just charge it up to the high cost of working for a living. Get it? Yeah, very funny. Well, see you in the morning. Good night. Uh, high cost of working for a living. Boy, you can say that again. Like this morning, while I'm checking a repair order with one of the boys. Okay, I'll get started on this job right away. Uh, good, gotta get it ready by noon. And now... Soon get through with it, will you? Young man, I say young man. Oh, me? Yes. Can you tell me where my car is? I'm in a hurry. I've got to get to the city hall right away. Well, what kind of car are you driving? It's a dark green Plymouth, 1946 two-door. But I don't see it around here. Dark green Plymouth, huh? Oh, let me think. Now, where do we put it? I think that's the job I have. It's down the line, Joe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You'll find it down at the other end. She's all set to go, I guess. Now, like I was saying, Al, as soon as you finish this job, take it over to Bob for an oil change. Young man, young man, what's the matter with you? Huh? Something wrong with your car? I'll tell you what's wrong. First, you chase me way down to the end of the building. And then when I finally find my car, I find there's another one right in front of it, so I can't get up. Come on, I'm in a hurry. Okay, okay, I'll have it moved. And let me tell you something else. The next time that car needs service, I'm going to take it where maybe I can get a little service, too. What did the guy expect me to do? Drive him to the city hall? And a little later, that other guy drove into the shop. Like I was saying, Jack, this big cop, see, he comes up alongside my car. Well, and... just a second, Joe. I better see what this customer wants. No, let me finish telling you about this cop. One of the other guys will take care of the customer. Like I was saying, this cop's is real tough like. What's the matter? You got eye trouble or something? You went right through a red light. So I said, look, if that was a red light, you better turn your badge in. What's more, I got 20-20 vision. Uh-oh. Nobody's got that customer yet. Relax, I'll take care of him. Probably only wants his car washed anyhow. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Is there something I can do for you? You mean, is there something I could have done, don't you? Listen, I'm on my way out of here. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Now, if you'll tell me what it was you wanted, I'll be glad to help you. What? Have you let me sit around here for five minutes? Nothing doing. What's the matter? You got eye trouble or something? Hey, wait a minute. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Why, well, I, uh, I don't know. Uh-huh. Now I've got you pegged. Sure. You were the bright boy with a 20-20 vision who ran that red light the other day. Well, officer, we all make mistakes, you know. Well, before you make any more mistakes, you better get those 20-20 peepers of yours examined. Huh. You can't even see customers right here in your shop. So long, bright eyes. I'll get my brakes fixed somewhere else. Huh. How'd I know the guy turned out to be that cop I tangled with? Oh, well... My little mortgage-covered cottage. Uh, gee, I sure hope Betty doesn't want to go anywhere tonight. Hi, Joey. Hurry and wash up, will you? We're having an early dinner tonight. Well, what's the big rush all about? Betty and I thought we could all go for an early movie. Well, you can include me out. After trying to outguess customers all day, I'm too tired to see a show. It seems to me, Joseph, that you're always too tired to do anything. Yeah, I know. Why, I was telling Betty only yesterday, if Joe were my husband, I'd tell him a thing or two. But it so happens that I'm your son-in-law, not your husband. Oh, for heaven's sake, let's not have another row. Mother and I will go to the show alone, and you... You can go to... Oh, you can go to bed for all I care. Joe Brown? But who are you? Relax, Joe. I'm one of the best friends you have. I'm the man behind the dollar. 
But I can't even see what you look like. Oh, I know, Joe, but what I look like doesn't matter. It's whom I represent that's really important to you. Oh, I, I don't get it. Obviously, otherwise you wouldn't have had a tough day at the shop. Or that argument with your wife and mother-in-law. And you wouldn't be missing the movie tonight. It's a good show, too. You'd like it, Joe. You mean you've got something to do with all the trouble I've been having lately? Well, let's put it this way, Joe. The folks I represent have a lot to do with your happiness or unhappiness. Your success or failure. The difference is up to you. Now, wait a minute. I don't know any folks as important as all that. You're wrong there, Joe, because you actually do know them. The point is, you have been taking them too much for granted lately and hurting yourself at the same time. Okay. Just who are these important buddies of yours? Suppose I answer that by asking you a question, Joe. Who pays you your salary check every week? Why, old man Grumby, the bookkeeper, of course. Mr. Grumby only hands you a check. Whose money is behind it? Huh, the boss's dough, naturally. And where does the boss get the money? Well, from the cars and parts and service we sell. And just who buys what you have to sell, Joe? Why, the customers do. All right, Joe. Now think. Actually, whose money is it that makes your paycheck possible? Oh, well, if you want to look at it that way, why, it's the customer's money, I guess. Exactly, Joe. And since it's really the customers who pay you, why do you make it so tough on yourself to earn that money? Why do I make it tough? Listen, it's the customers that make it tough, not me. You've got me figured out all wrong. When a customer plays ball with me, then Joseph A. Brown plays ball with the customer. Do you, Joe? Suppose we turn back the clock to this morning, just to see if you're right. Now then, Joe, you recognize the scene, don't you? Oh, sure. That was the guy with the green Plymouth. You figured he wasn't playing ball with you, is that it? Well, after all, he could see I was busy. So what did he expect? What every customer expects when he comes into your department, Joe. Prompt attention. Now, this customer didn't expect he'd have to hunt for his car any more than you'd expect that if you were in his shoes. Why, he even played right into your hands by telling you he was in a hurry. So what happened? So he gets sore because another car was parked in front of his. There's more to it than that, Joe. There is? Well, what is it? First of all, you lost an opportunity to win that customer's confidence. And by doing that, you lost all chances of getting any future business from that customer. Yeah, but he was only one customer. Holy cats. Suppose I do slip up once in a while. That doesn't mean we're going out of business. Not necessarily. But here's what can and often does happen in such cases. It only takes poor treatment of one customer to set off a whole chain of unfavorable word-of-mouth advertising, the kind that will actually keep other people away from your place of business. And that, in time, builds a poor reputation for you and the people you work for. It endangers your own security and the security of everyone else in the dealership. Now take that other case, Joe. Well, you lost another customer because you were so busy telling Jack a story. Now, don't remind me. It makes my face red. And it should, Joe. And not just because the customer turned out to be the cop. Why, I don't think I get what you mean. Joe, you didn't feel very good about having trouble with two customers in one day, did you? Well, no, I guess I didn't at that. Of course you didn't. So what happened? You came home with a chip on your shoulder, got into an argument, and missed a show. You see what I'm driving at, Joe? Since you have to spend a third of your day working for a living, why not make those hours pleasant as well as profitable? Well, you mean I have to be one of those smile, darn you, smile characters? Well, not that a smile won't help, Joe, but I was thinking of something else. Like what, for instance? Like taking a look at things from the customer's point of view, treating him as you yourself would want to be treated. In your case, Joe... That means seeing to it that the customer gets prompt, courteous attention. You know, when you come right down to it, you're a better than average service salesman, Joe. That is, you are once you get around to taking care of a customer. So, why let a simple thing like prompt attention stand in the way of becoming better at your job and enjoying yourself at the same time? Take it over, Joe. Take it over. 
Take it over. Sure. Sure. Sounds great. Good idea. Good idea. Count on me. Good morning, Bill, old man. How's everything going this morning? What the heck is that guy so happy about? Why, it isn't even payday. Morning, Jack. Great day, huh? Yes, sir. Great day. Look, laughing boy. You know how the boss frowns on reporting for work right fresh from a party. Hey, why don't you get some black carpet? Lots of it. Ah, relax. There's nothing the matter with me this morning. Not after the sleep I had last night. Well, okay. Say, speaking of last night... Uh, tell me later. I gotta catch this phone. Okay. I'm checking a job anyhow. Yes, Mr. White? Well, we can pick up your car this morning. Yes, sir. Oh, pardon me a moment, Mr. White. You mind waiting? I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, thank you. I'll wait. Uh, hello, Mr. White. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, we'll check on it and call you back. I'll send a man right away. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, good morning. Thanks for waiting. Now, what can I help you with this morning? I had a little trouble starting my car this morning. I thought I'd have it checked. All right, sir. If you'll please drive right over here, we'll take a look at it right now. So, like I was saying about last night, Joe, I was out with the cutest redhead you ever saw. Tell me later, pal. Got to take care of this customer. I wonder who built the fire under Joe. Never saw him so customer happy before. Probably his mother-in-law's been cracking the whip. Good afternoon, sir. May I help you? Yes, I brought my car in for lubrication this noon. Is it ready? Miller's my name. Yes, your car is ready, Mr. Miller. If you'll step over to the cashier's window with me, I'll get it for you in just a moment. Of course, I could be wrong, but I swear there's something very familiar about this customer. It's not so much what he looks like, it's his voice. Yeah, that's it. It's his voice. Do you have Mr. Miller's bill ready, please? It's a lubrication job. Here we are, Mr. Miller. Lubrication, one dollar even. Can I pay for it with this? Why, it's a silver dollar. Yes, silver dollar's well sort of a trademark of mine, you might say. Well, thank you, Mr. Miller. I'll bring your car around right away. Come back and see us again, won't you, Mr. Miller? Yes, thanks. I'll be seeing you again. Silver dollar. Silver dollar. And that voice. That familiar voice. Holy cats. Now I've got it. That dream I had last night. The man behind the dollar. No wonder that voice seemed familiar. Say, that gives me an idea. Say, Margie, how about trading me that silver dollar for a bill? I want it for a lucky piece. Boy, you sure are the surprise man of the year. How come the sudden all-out movement to take care of that old boy who just went out? Who was he, some big shot? I'll say he was a big shot. He's one of the really important people who come through that door. All right, give. Just who was he? Why, he was a customer, of course. Do you know anybody more important than that? Think it over, Jack. Think it over. Okay, I'll think it over. But right now, it's time to start closing up shop. Grab your hats, girls. We're off to dinner at the Brass Hat and then to the best show in town. Joseph, are you quite sure that you haven't dilly-dallied on the way home in some, some establishment? Oh, Mother, give Joe a break. I haven't seen him act like this for ages. But Joe, what is that you're flipping into the air? That? Oh, that's just a silver dollar, Betty. Isn't it rather odd for you to be toting silver dollars out with you, Joseph? Well, to tell you the truth, I wish this silver dollar had caught up with me a long time ago. But now that I've got it, I'm going to hang on to it, and all it stands for for a long, long time. 